Hello and welcome to part 3 of this series for creating a useful editor tool with Unity's UI Toolkit. To start with, I'm just going to clean this up by creating a region. And this is just going to be for event callbacks. And I'm just going to region here. Or now I can just minimize this. So for this video, we're just going to focus on these two methods here, which add some functionality to our buttons on our editor. Let's begin with the create texture method. If you need to, just press pause so you can copy down the code. So first we're starting with creating a white texture where we have declared two variables of text width and text height. And then we assign them to our values of our width field, which is an integer input field, and our height field. Then we use a for loop to set the color of each pixel in our texture to white. Essentially, our for loop is just doing this. After we've set the color of all of our pixels in our texture, we use the apply method to apply those changes. Next, we create a ball which determines if our text width is greater than our text height. And we create two variables, one called an X ratio and a Y ratio, which initially start off with a value of one. Now, depending on if greater width is true or not, we will change the value of y ratio or x ratio. So if the width is greater than the height, then we'll adjust the y ratio. But if the height is greater than the width, then we'll adjust the x ratio. Then we're assigning the dimensions of our image preview visual element by multiplying 300, which is our ideal width and height, by their according ratios. So for example, if we wanted to create a texture that was like 500 in width and 100 in height with our image preview element, the maximum width would remain at 300, while the height of the element would be scaled to the Y ratio. Next, we'll just create a, a new method called apply alpha gradient. And we're going to insert this method in two of our existing callbacks. We will put it in texture option selected. And alpha option selected. And then we'll also put it at the end of this create texture method. Next, we'll insert this code. So if our selected texture is currently null, then our export button will be disabled. Then after that, we'll just set our export button to be enabled. And for the time being, we'll just add in this code. Output texture equals selected texture. And then we'll make our image preview element. Um, the background image will be our output texture. So let's save this and we'll go into the Unity editor. So when we open our image alpha editor and press the create texture button, we now have a preview of our texture that we created. And if, for example, we had a, a width of 1000 and a height of 100, you can see our preview element has just scaled it. So it won't exceed the width of 300. Instead, it just downscaled the, the height. We do this the other way. So I'll say width of 100 and the height of 1000. And this time it scaled the width down so that the height could remain in this 300 by 300 preview. While we're here, I'm just going to change the name of this button. So open this up in 
UI Builder. And an export button, we'll just name the text to export. Uh, not just export. Okay, export texture. There you go. Save that. And we'll just go back to our script. Okay, this time we'll be working with the export image method. So we'll insert this code. So in this section, we are using the save file panel method from editor utility, which is very useful for editor tools if you actually want to save an asset that you've created or edited. However, this only works with the editor and not runtime. And the arguments we are passing to it is the title of that save file panel window, the default directory where we initially want to open our save file panel at, the default name of the file we are going to save it as, and the extension of that file. Uh, then encoding our texture to be a PNG format, and then we are just writing that file to that path. Just go back up to the previous method, and under selected texture.apply, we will assign a value to our output name just so it's not empty. I'll just call it custom text. Eventually, when we start loading in existing textures to edit, we will reassign the name of output name to be something which is derived from the original name of the texture we loaded. And we'll go back to our export image method. Okay, and finally, we'll just insert this last piece of code this. So in this section here, we are just importing the asset that we have created and saved. We are refreshing the asset database. Then we are focusing on the project editor window. What we want to do next is make our selection active objects and the project hierarchy be our asset that we created. So we're assigning it to this asset database.loadasset path method. However, the string path you need for load asset at path has to be relative to the assets folder. So this is where this section of code above it comes into play. Where we find the index of assets in the string of path string, and we create a substring from it, which starts at that asset index for the remainder length of that path string. And lastly, I just have a debug log, which just basically says where the file is located when it was saved. So let's save this and go back to Unity. So now when we go back in our editor, um, since no texture has been created, you can see that the export texture button has been disabled. Let's just create a texture, which is just the square 100 by 100. And now we can press export texture which opens up this save file panel. You can see our default name custom text has been populated in the file name and the save file type is PNG. And the title for this save file panel is save edited texture. So now when I click save, our texture has been saved and has been revealed to us where it can be found. So I just saved it in the assets folder and here it is highlighted just to make it easier for us to see where it is in our folder hierarchy. Okay, that rounds off this episode of the series. In the next episode, we'll start implementing some of our callbacks. So I'll see you then. Peace.